Colgate is giving up 342 yards in offense, and Bucknell's offense has improved. Don McDowell has completed 62% of his passes in five starts for an average of 150 yards. Again, the Bucknell offense needs to put some points on the board with their patchwork offensive line. If there's an edge for Bucknell, it's in the depth at receiver. We're going to take this final time out and be back to kick this one off after this. You're listening to Bucknell Football on the Bison Sports Network. We're set to go here at Colgate. The Red Raiders have won the toss. They have elected to defer, which means Bucknell is going to get the football first, something we haven't seen a whole heck of a lot this season in 1997. The Bucknell offense is going to have a chance to score first, and sometimes in a big game, if the field is going to be poor, you want to have a chance to have the ball when the field is going to be at its best, and that would certainly be early in the season here in this game here today. Dropping back deep, O.J. Perkins on the far side, on the near side for the Bison, Terrence Parham. Parham, of course, Bucknell's all-time kick return leader with two run back for a touchdown. No one else has done two ever at Bucknell. Kicking off for the Red Raiders will be Eric Kuchke, who is also their punter. Colgate this season has given up a touchdown return last week against Navy. It went 95 yards. They are averaging 16 yards to return. So other than a couple of long ones, Colgate has done a good job kick returning. For Bucknell, they're averaging about 20 yards a return in 1997. Again, the conditions on the field right now, the snow is off the field. It's been pushed over to the sidelines. It was covered a little bit this morning with snow from an early morning snow shower. But when the players came out to warm up, it melted the snow, and it looks like it's a lot of dirt. There's some patches of green grass, and it's kind of sporadic where the patches are. And uh, we'll see if the footing will be a problem here this afternoon. Kuchki is going to tee the ball up on the near side of the field. And it looks as if Colgate's going to try to kick Bucknell into one corner and try to cover it. Decent crowd on the Colgate side. I would have expected more. Short run up by Kuchki. He kicks it high in the air end over end. Parham's going to get it on the 10. Come up the left side of the 15, to the 20, to the 25, to the 30. He'll get bumped out of bounds to the 33. It'll be a return of 23 for Terrence Parham. And the Bison will start first and 10 from their own 33-yard line. Don McDowell will be the quarterback. Again, in his last six games, he's completed 62% of his passes, 62 of 100 for 743 yards. I may have said his last six games. I met his last five. He has also been able to run the ball as he's rushed for seven touchdowns in that time frame. Jeff Bombick and Chris Peer are going to open in the backfield. Chris Peer, 1,035 yards rushing. He's averaging over 100 yards. First down, Bucknell at the 33. Quick hitter to the fullback, Bombick. He'll get the better part of four yards out across the 35 to about the 38-yard line. We'll call it a gain of four, bringing up second down and six. The wide receivers to start were Ronnie Rocket and Artie Kissinger. Kenny Schultz will come into the game now. Kenny, one of the better blockers as far as receivers are concerned. The offensive line, Don Shump, George Hogan, Neil Thompson, Joe DeLugos, and Jason Wankowitz. Cal Wilcox will play tight end. Again, Bucknell has lost two starting offensive linemen down the stretch this season. Second down now and six. McDowell will throw his first pass. Has time, floats it out, and the ball is underthrown to the fullback, Jeff Bombick. It's incomplete. 
on the coverage linebacker Kevin Karimsky for Colgate, but that ball just didn't have enough oomph on it for Don McDowell to get it to Jeff Bombick. Today, one of the big jobs is going to be the ball boys on the sideline to keep the balls dry. McDowell throws a much better dry ball than a wet ball. Defensively for Colgate, they run a 4-3. Fifth-year senior Blair Hicks is a defensive end. He is their best lineman. Jeff Bentz, a defensive tackle, a three-year starter, plus two-year starters Neil Gomez and Dan Rivera, veteran defensive line for Colgate. Third and six with the Bison. McDowell out of the shotgun, looking downfield. Has all day. Now will run. 35, 40. He's going to get the first down at the 45 inside Colgate territory, and he'll be knocked down by one of the linebackers, Eric Zaleski, but not before the Bison pick up a first down to the Colgate 47-yard line. Zaleski, Matt Damiancic, and Kevin Karimski. Three veterans after the 16-yard run by Don McDowell that'll play linebacker, the secondary, the weakest group for Colgate. Jamal Patterson, the fifth-year senior, the best of the group playing strong safety. They've got Jesse Boyd along with Brandon Tinson and Dominic Zanet that are playing in the secondary. Bucknell will put two receivers to the wide side as the ball gets marked at the 46 of Colgate. Pierre will get his first carry, cuts back to the left, and he may go all the way. 40, 30, 20, 15, 10. He'll be knocked out of bounds at the four-yard line. It'll be a 42-yard run for Chris Pierre down to the four-yard line. And the Bison are knocking on the door looking to draw first blood. George Hogan with the big block for the Bucknell Bison on the left side springing Chris Peer on a little cutback and he had good running down the left side as that's where most of the grass is. So the Bison will bring Rashawn Whitner and Jeremy Myers into the game. Now Whitner will come back out as Bucknell looks to draw first blood. Bison will play with two tight ends, now three tight ends. They'll use Weaver as a wing back. They'll line up Jeremy Myers at tailback behind Jeff Bombick. They'll switch the tight ends. Colgate will show a six-man front. Early going, no score. McDowell to Myers. Myers over the left side, inside the three, and he'll get probably to the two, so we'll call it a gain of two, and it'll be second and goal from the two. Bison in the first quarter in their last four games have outscored their opponents 53 to nothing. Again, they've not let a trailed since the Yale ball game. That was the fifth game of the season in the fourth quarter, and the first quarter has been kind to Bucknell, 79 to 27. Big scramble on third down for McDowell, and a big run by Chris Peer have gotten the Bison into a goal-to-go -go situation. Second down and goal, we'll call it from the three. Baxter and I, Peer back in the game at tailback. McDowell's going to roll right on the option. He's going to keep it, and he'll maybe get to the two. We'll call it a gain of one, and the Bison will now have third down and goal at the two to try to score first. Colgate has gotten tough down here this season defensively. They have allowed only 38% on third down conversions that the opponents have been able to make. Bison going to bring Rashawn Whitner into the game for Corey Hurley at tight end. McDowell gets the play from the sideline, 12-38 and counting in the first quarter. Bombick the fullback covered in mud. Pierre with a clean uniform, at least for now, at tailback. Wilcox will move to the right side. Whitner will move as a wing back on the right side. That's the short side. McDowell will hand the ball to Pierre over the right side. He's not in. He'll be stopped at the one-yard line. And it'll be decision time for Tom Gadd. It'll be fourth down and goal at the one for the Bison. They have moved a yard on each play, and the Bison are going to bring the field goal team on and try to get three points on the board here. It's going to be a very short field goal for Ross Coleman, who's number one in the Patriot League in field goals with 10. He's made 10 of 16, but 9 of 11 inside the 40-yard line. Holding will be McDowell, and snapping will be Neil Thompson. This will be a 19-yard attempt as the ball will be spotted at the 9 to try to give Bucknell a 3 to nothing lead. Fourth down and goal. Nice snap. Now the ball's dropped by McDowell. McDowell will lateral to Coleman. He's running. Coleman will be tackled at the five and fall forward to the four, and Colgate is held. So the first break of the game goes to the Red Raiders as McDowell bobbles the snap from center, and the Red Raiders take over on the four, so they get the football for the first time today, and now the Bison defense has them backed up inside the five. So the Bison hold it for the first four and a half minutes. And now the Red Raiders offense will come on with Ryan Venna at quarterback. Venna has one back, no two back. Smith in front of Weiss. They'll hand the ball to Weiss, and Weiss will get stuffed at the line of scrimmage, maybe a gain of one to the six-yard line. 
Ryan Venner, the quarterback, the sophomore, who was the MVP last year in the Patriot League. Completed 58% of his passes this season for an average of 168 yards, 14 touchdowns, and 12 interceptions. That's not a great ratio there. He'll throw some balls up for grabs. Coming into last week's game against Navy, Venom was only sacked 12 times, but last week Navy got him five times. Two possible 1,000-yard rushers in the backfield for Colgate. Smith comes into the game with 857, and Ed Weiss, who was an afterthought prior to the season, is the tailback, and he's rushed for 982. Bad snap from center. The ball loose on the ground, and we'll see who's come up with it. And it looks like Colgate's Ryan Venna fell back on it, so it's a burnt down, maybe a gain of one or so on the play, and now Colgate will have a third down and long. Wide receivers for Colgate, Corey Hill and R.J. Gregory. Hill with 60 catches this season, could get 1,000 yards receiving for the year if he comes up with 101 this afternoon. Tight end Ernie Quackenbush, and then the offensive line, very veteran, Clasby, George, Bolas, Monfit, and Girard. All five people have started before this season and are very big. They average 278 across the front. Third down and seven. Benna will roll to the left side. Benna throwing the ball over the middle, and it's into traffic, nearly intercepted by Eric Musi. The ball was intended for the tight end, Chris Rossi, who was in there, and Colgate does not get a first down on its initial possession and will have to punt the football away. So coming on to punt will be Eric Kuchke, who's had one block this season. Kuchke, the transfer from West Virginia. Last year averaged 40 yards a kick right there this year as well. Hardy Kissinger in single safety, number three in the Patriot League at nine yards of return. Nice pass from center, and it's a low spiraling kick. Kissinger will field it at the 49 of Bucknell. Across the midfield stripe to the 45 to the far sideline. A flag is down. Bucknell will have it at the 40, but an illegal block is going to take it back to the midfield stripe or maybe a little bit further back, and Bucknell will start at first and 10. 42 yards on the punt. The return was about 12, but again, an illegal block going against the Bison. Again, to recap the start for you, Bucknell took the opening kickoff and a nice third down run by McDowell for 16 yards, and then a 42-yard run for the uh, running back Chris Peer gave Bucknell the ball at the four-yard line, but three stops and then a bad hold on a field goal have negated Bucknell's first possession, so the defense gets it back for the offense, and we'll see what the offense is able to do. Penalty is indeed an illegal block against Bucknell, so it'll move the ball back out across the midfield stripe to the 48-yard line. Bison have had the edge in time of possession last week against Towson. 40 minutes in time of possession for Bucknell. Here with uh, two carries today for 43 yards. Bison have only thrown one pass, and that was short hop to Jeff Bombick. First down and 10 for the Bucknell offense at their own 48. Backs in an eye. McDowell will hand the ball to Peer over the left side. He'll get two to midfield, and he'll be stacked up by the middle linebacker, Eric Zaleski, with help from defensive tackle Neil Gomez. So a gain of two over the left side, and we'll see how teams are able to throw the ball today, whether this may just be a day where they're going to slug it out between the tackles. No score, nine and a half minutes to go in the first half. Again tonight coming up at 5-10. It'll be Bucknell basketball against Brown on WVLY 100.9 FM and WWPA AM 1340. It'll be with Chris Carlin and Pat Farabaugh. They'll be in Fairfield, Connecticut. Second down and eight. McDowell on a straight drop back. Plenty of time again. Throws it over the middle. A leaping catch by Paul Lima for the first down. It'll be a gain of 10 to the Colgate 40. And for Lima, that's only his seventh catch of the season. But he has had big catches all year. He's averaged 19 yards a catch. That one went for 10. So Lima moves the sticks with the catch. McDowell again has been hot the last five games. Has been a master of throwing the ball to the receivers. Again, completed 62%. He's only thrown one interception in his last 95 passes. Down under nine minutes in a scoreless first quarter. Kissing her to the right. Rocket to the left. They'll split the backs this time. Pure and Myers behind McDowell. Four-man front for Colgate. McDowell being rushed hard this time. Throws the ball away. And we'll see if grounding will be called. There's no receiver out there. And the officials keep the hankies in the pocket. They will not call grounding. So McDowell got away with one that time very cagely. It'll be second down now. And uh, 10 coming up for the Bison at the 40-yard line of Colgate. Good pressure by the defensive line of the Red Raiders led by defensive end Dan Rivera for Colgate. McDowell standing away from the huddle, getting the play signaled in from Chris Turner. No score. Bucknell led last year after one quarter, 14 to nothing. 
Kissinger to the right, Rocket to the left. Again, backs in an offset eye this time. Colgate jams six at the line. McDowell's going to run to the short side, flip it to Peer, had to wait for the pitch, catches it, goes across the line of scrimmage, and will gain five to the 35 of Colgate. You get the feeling where Bucknell has the football right here, that this is two down territory. Certainly too far for a field goal, probably too close to punt, so Bucknell looking to get the five yards in two different plays. Bucknell converted five fourth downs last week without a miss against Towson. Lima and Rocket to the left, Kissinger to the right. They'll play with no tight end and split the backs, Bombic and Pier. Colgate puts six at the line. McDowell on a long count on third down and five. Two-step drop, throws it over the middle, floats it, and it's nearly intercepted. Should have been caught by Dominic Zanet, a sophomore from Colgate, who was a former wide receiver, and now Bucknell is going to play the field position game because they didn't get closer than five yards. They are going to punt the football here from the 35-yard line. Bucknell has had two good chances, a first and goal at the four and a first down at the Colgate 40 and have not been able to do anything with it. Back to return it for Colgate is Jesse Boyd, who averages 12 yards a return, set a Patriot League record against Holy Cross with 89 yards on a punt return for a touchdown a few weeks ago. It's going to be Chris Peer to punt on the short punt. Angling, no, he's going to punt it down the middle, and Boyd will catch it on the 10 on the line drive. To the 15, a fly, no, it's a beanbag that's down, just to mark where the return started. He'll return it from the 10 to the 25, a return of 15, a punt that time of only 25 yards, or thereabouts, and it'll be a first and 10 coming up for Colgate at their own 25-yard line, so the entire first quarter thus far has virtually been played at Colgate's defensive end of the field. Smith in front of Weiss. Sean Dukvich is to the right side. They'll hand the ball up the middle to Weiss, and Weiss will get six, seven yards out across the 30 to the 33-yard line. On the tackle, Sean Thompson for the Bison, with help from Willie Hill and Wally Hurdley. And they're going to actually give him forward progress to the 34-yard line, so that's eight yards they'll pick up on that play. So it'll be second down and two coming up for the... Red Raiders as they get a big first down play. Bison show a five-man front, the down three, plus Berman and Tom Farrell on the outside. Quick hitter to the fullback, Damon Smith, and maybe a yard at best. He won't see the 35. We'll give him a yard to the 34. And Colgate will have a third down at about a yard and a half as the Red Raiders look for their initial first down of the football game. Bison defense, Steve Pratico, Mark Imbertson will trade off at one defensive end, Eric Green will be the nose guard, and Hunter Adams will be the other defensive end. Wally Hurdley, Willie Hill, the senior inside linebackers, and the outside linebackers, Farrell and Berman, Musselman, Musi, Lebrecht, Thompson, and Lustig will be in combinations in the secondary. Third down and a long one for Colgate. 6.46 to go in the first quarter, no score. They hand the ball to the deep back, Smith. He's got the first down out across the 36 to the 37. He needed a yard and a half. He probably got two and a half. And again, tough running in the middle against the Bucknell defense. But a first down for Colgate, their first first down of the afternoon. Temperature mid-30s, no precipitation right now. Again, the Colgate sideline, pretty good crowd. I would have expected a little more from them in a championship game. Good turnout from the Bison coming three and a half hours north. Corey Hill to the wide side with Gregory. Backs in an offset eye. Smith back to the fullback in front of Weiss. Benna rolls to the left side, floats a pass to Smith, makes a catch on the 44, comes out across the 45 to midfield before he gets bumped out of bounds, and Colgate will have yet another first down. This will be a pickup of about 14 yards as the Red Raiders are into Bucknell territory for the first time this afternoon. First and 10 Red Raiders at the Bucknell 49-yard line. Not a very pretty pass, almost like a shot put from Venna out to Damon Smith. Smith this season with 11 catches now in 11 games, so he's not one of the primary targets for the Red Raiders. In fact, 60 catches for Corey Hill. The next closest doesn't even have half that many. First and 10. Venna on the option will keep it right side. Stumbles but gets inside the 45. Inside the 40 down to the 37-yard line. A gain of 12 on the scramble for Ryan Venna. He's averaging with sacks three and a half yards a carry. Averaging 38 yards rushing a ball game, but again, Remember, he's been sacked 17 times, so that pulls yardage off the running in college football. Bison will substitute. Tom Farrell will come out of the game. Back into the game, Josh Lebrecht. 
He's seen time this year both at outside linebacker and at strong safety. He's at outside linebacker right now. First and 10, Colgate driving at the Bucknell 37-yard line. Then into the deep back, Weiss. Weiss jumps into the middle, but right into the waiting arms of Wally Hurdley. It'll be a gain of two to the 35-yard line. And it'll bring up second down and eight. Five and a half minutes to go in the first quarter. No score. Four carries, 14 yards for Weiss. Smith has carried it once for one yard. So the backs for Colgate today have had trouble running between the tackles. In fact, the longest run of the day, a dozen for Ryan Venna. Hill to the right, Gregory to the left. They don't substitute much at wide receiver. Mark Imberson now in the game for Steve Pratico at a defensive end. Second and eight. Venna back to pass, throws it to Hill, makes the catch of the 30. Eludes a tackle of Josh Lebrecht, gets inside the 25 to the 22-yard line. It'll be a gain of about 14 on the play. Another first down for Colgate. And on this first down, uh, this drive, I believe they picked up three first downs on the drive. An eight-play drive working with the next snap of the football for the Colgate Red Raiders. First quarter has moved rapidly, and it does when you run, run the ball a lot. Five minutes and counting to go in the first quarter. Hill to the left, Gregory to the right. Again, Bucknell fanned on two opportunities in the first quarter. They had a chance inside the five-yard line and also with a first down at the Colgate 40. Van into the first back through that Smith. The jersey's getting awfully muddy. Smith will plow his way inside the 20 to about the 18-yard line. It'll be a gain of four on first down, so it's second and six. That was the second running play to Smith here this afternoon. No score in the first quarter if you're just joining us. Again, all the marbles on the line here. The Patriot League Championship, the winner to the NCAA Tournament, and for Bucknell, its first undefeated season since 1951. Red Raiders will break the huddle as they approach the red zone where Bucknell has been outstanding this season. Over half the time, opponents have not gotten touchdowns. Venna rolls left on the option, pulls back to throw, ball tipped in the air by Wally Hurdley and nearly intercepted. Ball was nearly intercepted at the 17-yard line just out of the midst of, of Sean Thompson. Spoke with him in the hotel last night and said he hasn't had an interception all season and really wanted one this afternoon and just couldn't quite run up, didn't get enough traction to get the ball. So now the Red Raiders with a big third down. We'll call it third down and six from inside the 20 at the 19. Ball on the right hash, so they'll put both receivers to the left side. 3.58 to go in the first quarter. Backs in an offset eye. Bennett will toss the ball to White, short side, inside the 20. Fumbles the football. Who's going to recover it? It's still loose. It's rolling inside the 10. And I think Steve Berman may have recovered it for Bucknell. Wait a second. Now they're going to maybe say the ball was dead. The ball kept rolling out of that Oakland Raiders play in the early 80s towards the goal line. And we'll see where they're going to spot it. It appears Colgate still has the football. The officials are discussing things. And the officials now talk as the field. They'll pull it, and Colgate is going to be short by about a foot. So it'll be decision time for Colgate. This season they have converted 40, excuse me, 76% of their fourth downs, 19 out of 25. Bucknell has done a pretty good job. They've stopped opponents 45% of the time on fourth down, and Colgate a team that's only tried six field goals all season is going to leave the field goal team on the field, on the off the field, and bring on their big team to try to get this fourth and one. Again, the ball kept rolling. I'm not sure who came up with it for Colgate. Thought the ball ended up inside the 10, but they marked it at the 13 or 14 yard line. They probably have a little more than a foot to go for a first down. Three minutes and 49 seconds to go in a scoreless first quarter. Bucknell was inside the five for a first down and came up blank. Colgate with a big fourth down inside the 15, actually at the 14, inside the 14. Play with one receiver, two tight ends, and an eye formation. Venna under center, gives it to the deep back Smith. He's over for the first down, getting close to the 10-yard line. Gain of about three or four on the play, and Colgate will get a fresh set of downs. It will not be a first and goal but they can probably get a first down at about the one yard line. Clock stopped as they move the chains. No score, but Colgate with their first threat of the ball game as they're down at the 11 yard line of Bucknell. 
Bison scored first last year and in fact led 14 to nothing. Colgate battled back to in fact take a 21-14 lead. Venna under center, backs in an eye from the 11. Venna carries left side, slips, and gets tackled maybe at the 10. He may get a yard. Whole host of Bison on the tackle. Hunter Adams was there, one of the first to get to him. Wally Hurley, Mark Imbertson there as well. So it'll be a gain of one, but Venna had no traction as he went to the left side. Sean Thompson back into the game for the Bison. Josh Lebrecht will come out. Down under three minutes to go in the first quarter. No score. Gregory to the left, Hill to the left side. Ball pretty much in the middle of the field. The lineup a clean jersey tight end, Ernie Quackenbush to the right side. Venna play fakes, rolling, looking for his tight end in the end zone, throws it to the back of the end zone. Incomplete, they'll say the ball was uncatchable as the tight end and the safety, Sean Thompson, were jousting in the back of the end zone, but again, the ball sailed about five feet over both of their heads. And now Colgate with a third down and nine from the 10. They must get to the one for the first down. Another running back, Jared Bowers, will come into the game. He's a senior, hasn't played a whole lot, bothered by a pinched nerve this season. But back this week for the championship game. Very easy to tell when subs are in the game because their uniforms are very, very clean. To the left side, it's Sean Dukevich with Corey Hill. Gregory to the right side out of the shotgun. Venna gets the pass from center, has time. Looks left side, the defender slips, and Hill makes the diving catch, and the Red Raiders are on the board on a 10-yard pass from Sean Venna to Corey Hill. The Bison defender slipped in the corner. And the Red Raiders lead by the score of 6-0 with 2.33 remaining in the first quarter. For Venna, he has now thrown a touchdown pass in 17 straight Colgate games, continuing to set his own record. And for Corey Hill, that's his ninth touchdown pass of the season that he has caught for Colgate. Federico on for the extra point where he's 22 of 25. Slips but kicks it anyway, and it's up and through. We've got a break in the action. Colgate in front by the score of 7-0 with 2.33 to go in the first. You're listening to Bucknell Football on the Bison Sports Network. A 14-play, 75-yard drive for the Red Raiders. It took five and a half minutes off the clock. And gives Colgate a 7-0 lead. The defender that was pushed or slipped was Nate Musselman. So the Red Raiders are on the board on the 10-yard pass from Veneta Hill. And the Bison are going to get the football back on a kick return by either Terrence Parham or O.J. Perkins. Kuchke kicks off, high end over end. Perkins will run up, get it on the 16. Come to the 20, to the 25, to the 30. Out across the 35 was tripped up by one of the special teams players for Colgate by John Constantino and fell about five yards further upfield. So the Bison with decent field position again. First down at the 37 their own. And when uh, this game is talked about, It'll be very interesting to see if the uh, Bison not coming up with anything on a first and goal at the four will be the play of the game. As Tom Gad said, in games like this, a lot of times the team that gets ahead stays ahead. Big drive for the Bison here, first and 10 on their own 37. McDowell back to pass, throws it to Rocket. It's off his fingertips at the 40-yard line, incomplete. On the coverage was Brandon Tinson, who missed last week's game against Navy with a hamstring. He is regarded by Bucknell's coaching staff as the best defensive back in the group. He had started the previous nine games and has three interceptions. Missed all of last season with a dislocated shoulder that he did in the preseason. Second and ten, McDowell still looking for 
I believe for his first completion of the day. McDowell will hand the ball to Peer, and Peer will go over the right side for just a couple. On the stop, Mike Burton, a defensive tackle for Colgate. Also, Matt Domiancic, who is their leading tackler with 128 tackles coming into the game, including eight sacks. Domiancic, the transfer from Air Force, had two big seasons at Colgate. This one in the 95 season. Last season only had 21 tackles after he was injured midway through the campaign. Minute 55 to go in the quarter. First quarter, Colgate seven, Bucknell nothing. Bison with a third and eight will operate out of the shotgun. Colgate with a four-man rush, two running back side by side with McDowell in the backfield. Thompson snaps it, nice snap. Colgate blitzes a couple in the middle. McDowell steps up and it'll be sacked back at the 33-yard line. Mike Burton, a man to get to him, and Bucknell's gonna have to punt the football, the 31st sack of the season for the Colgate Red Raiders. They only had 24 last season. The Bison have now given up 27 sacks in 1977. Jesse Boyd to return it. Brian Kramer will be on to punt. Kramer did not punt the first time, Peer did on the short punt. Clock running down to close to a minute to go in the first quarter. Colgate with 10 at the line, but now they drop a couple more back. Bison with a fourth down and about 14. Colgate with token rush, they want the football, and Kramer gets a low tumbling kick. It's gonna bounce the Colgate 43 and roll dead at the 37, so Colgate will start with excellent field position after limiting the Bison to no first downs on that series, and now with a chance to put themselves up by two touchdowns on the kick that time, 32 yards for Brian Kramer, which is short of his average by about five or six. Brian Venna this afternoon has had trouble throwing, as has Don McDowell. Three out of six for Venna. McDowell, I may have said, had no completions, but had one, threw the ball to Paul Lima that I forgot about, so he is just one out of seven, so Day like today, the mud gets on the ball. It's tough to throw. Venno is going to try to throw. He'll roll to the left side, looks downfield, being chased by Imbertson, decides to run the ball, gets to the corner, and gets to the 40, maybe slides out of bounds to the 42. It'll be a scramble of about four, maybe five yards on the play as Venno kept pumping, looking downfield, but no one was open. But more importantly, probably could never really set his feet to throw the ball. They'll move the ball to the 40. Two 43-yard line, so they'll give him five. It'll be second and five. 42 seconds remain in the first quarter, which Colgate leads 7-0 moments ago. Marched at 75 yards in five and a half minutes. A 14-play drive. This Colgate team has also had very good first quarters this season. Venna will give it to the deep back. That's Weiss, missed arm tackles. He's got the first down out across the 50 into Bucknell territory to the 48-yard line. It'll be a gain of eight or nine on the play. Bucknell missed some arm tackles at the line of scrimmage, and Weiss broke free. He came into the game needing just 18 yards for 1,000, and he's got it right now. And Colgate, if Damon Smith could somehow get 143, that'd be a tough effort for him. Would become the first Patriot League team to ever have 2,000-yard rushers in one season. Bucknell, back in that undefeated year of 1951, had 2,000-yard rushers in a nine-game season, Talmadge and Myers. First and 10, Colgate from the Bucknell 48. They run the ball to Weiss, nearly first down yardage again. Out inside the 40 to the 39, he'll be a yard shy, nine more. Colgate just taking Bucknell to the woodshed the last couple of plays at the line of scrimmage, running over the left side, 300-pounder Luke George and 266-pounder Paul Clasby. They have a second and one, and this may be a time that they might want to go deep. The first quarter is going to expire. We're going to change ends. Bucknell had the play early but couldn't cash in. Colgate's had to play late. It's 7 0 in favor of the Red Raiders. Let's take time out. You're listening to Bucknell Football on the Bison Sports Network. <laughs> говорит об учении христианской науки. Сегодня мы хотели бы познакомить вас ближе с этим учением. Давайте послушаем статью на тему «Христианская наука. Что это такое?» Христианская наука основана на учении Библии. Слово «наука», согласно словарю «Бэбэстера», значит «Ведь» или
Bob Beeler, Rob Marr, Rick Lund back here at Colgate. It's second and one. Colgate leads at seven to nothing. A little handoff in the middle to Damon Smith. Plows inside the 35 to the 33. First down and more for Colgate. It'll be a gain of seven or eight for the Colgate running back, Damon Smith, and that'll be his longest run of the afternoon. As the Red Raiders that time ran a little misdirection play, sent everybody over to the right side and cut back to the left side and got the first down. The Red Raiders have ever since they stopped Bucknell on the bad hold on a field goal try from inside the one, have had momentum their way. Early moments, second quarter, 7-0 Red Raiders. Vanna under center. Play fakes to the fullback. Smith rolls to the right side, being chased by Tom Farrell, throws it downfield. It's tipped and nearly intercepted and then nearly caught. Terrence Parham and Corey Hill were both going for the jump ball. And it'll be incomplete second and 10. Vena got outside that time, and the big defensive linemen for the Bison were chasing from behind but couldn't get to him. So now the Red Raiders with a second and 10. Vena against Army had a big day, rushed 18 times for 75 yards, completed 14 of 22 for 182, but against Navy did not do much last week. Second down and 10. Gregory to the left, Hill to the right. On the option, they'll give the ball to the first back through. That's Damon Smith. He'll get about four to the 29-yard line. I'm actually, we'll give him a little less, about three. Time of possession in the first quarter, almost even. Eight minutes for Colgate, seven for Bucknell. But most of Bucknell's time was spent early on that first drive when they got to the four and couldn't punch it in. Colgate has had a little better of the passing yards today, but not much. Big third down here. Colgate probably looking at two downs. Is the ball at the 29-yard line. Minute gone by in the second quarter. They're going to operate out of the shotgun. Two backs, three receivers, no tight ends. Nice pass from center. Buckdell blitzes in the middle. Bennett throws it up for grabs, and it's caught by Hill. Thompson overcommitted to the 20, to the 10, to the 5, and Colgate is down to the 3. Thompson jumped a little bit too soon. Corey Hill waited for the ball, and it's a big gainer. It'll be a gain of about 30 yards down to the three-yard line, and Colgate will have it first down and goal from there. So a big third down conversion. And Venna continues to be able to pull rabbits out of his hat. They don't look effective when they go up. They're just floated, but it's been effective. Hill now with three catches for 49 yards. And Venna has completed four of eight passes for 62 yards. And Colgate looking to try to take a two-touchdown lead from the two-yard line. They'll hand the ball to the fullback, Smith. He'll go into the end zone untouched. And Colgate will extend its lead to 13 to nothing with 13.27 to go in the second quarter. So the Red Raiders lead at 13 to nothing. And Bucknell is going to have to pull a game out of their hat like they did against Harvard. When the Bison found themselves down 20 to seven after one quarter. On for the extra point, Federico. Holding will be the backup quarterback, Polly Kerr, and Federico's kick is up, and Federico's kick is good. We've got another break in the action with the Red Raiders now leading by two touchdowns, 14 to nothing. You're listening to Bucknell Football on the Bison Sports Network. Bobbiller back here at Colgate. Joining us in the booth, representing the Patriot League here, Todd Newcomb. We're going to visit with him during this next drive here and find out 
what the Patriot League is looking for in the way of an opponent in the NCAA playoffs. Again, right now, Colgate leading 14 to nothing. Kuchki will kick off, and Parham will field it on the 15. Another fairly short kick. Parham to the 20, to the 25, to the outside, to the 30, to the 35, to the 40, up the sidelines, and he's going to get bumped out of bounds. We'll see where they officially mark him. Maybe just short of the 40 at the 39-yard line. And that's where the Bison will start at first and 10, down 14 to nothing. And Todd, what are you hearing uh, from the uh, powers that be in the NCAA? Uh, where does this winner look like it's going to go? Well, Bob, I, I, I would think it's going to either be Villanova or Delaware. Uh, teams on the East Coast and, and relatively close in the region to uh, either Bucknell or Colgate. So those are the two names that are being mentioned the most. And both of those teams have been assigned home games already. Western Illinois, Western Kentucky. And the other home team is going to be Eastern Washington, so we don't expect to go out near Spokane. First and 10 for the Bison. They'll hand the ball to Peer. Peer to the 40, to the 45, to midfield. Has the first down on a gain of 12 to the 49-yard line. Tied your sense of the mood of this game. It started out all Bucknell, and then, then all of a sudden it went out with a bad hold on a field goal try. The momentum totally sh uh, changed after that play, uh, especially you know, Chris Peer gets down close to the goal line, and he gets stuffed a couple plays, and then it uh, looked like McDowell just mishandled the snap, really. It didn't look like it was a bad snap, and then uh, Colgate's kind of picked it up since then. Perkins and Lima go to the right side. Bucknell's tight end will be on the left side as the ball... On the left hash, on a quick count on first and 10, they hand the ball to Peer, and Peer will get a couple to about the 48-yard line. So it'll be second down and eight as Colgate able to make the stop. Dan Rivera in there for the Red Raiders. Kevin Karimsky there as well. Todd, you've seen uh, Colgate play several times this year. A lot has been made about the tougher schedule. Is that something that might help them today? I think it's no question going to help them. Uh, you know, they've got a very talented pair of running backs, both backs close to 1,000 yards. In fact, uh, Weiss went over 1,000 already. Uh, and it's definitely going to help him in this game. Second down and eight for the Bison. McDowell will hand the ball to Myers. Myers inside the 45. Gets to the 42, so about five yards on the picket for Myers, leaving Bucknell with a third and short. Again, Karimski on the tackle with help from Gomez. If you look at their losses, Bob, um, other than the two 1A teams, they lost to a tough Richmond squad first game of the year, and they played them tough 21-6, and then they lost uh, their only quote, I guess, bad loss of the year would be to Princeton uh, right here at Andy Kerr. And, and in that game, Ryan Venna threw five interceptions, so you're not going to help yourself there. So they've played a pretty tough schedule. 14 to nothing in favor of Colgate, 11-44 and counting to go in the first half. Bucknell with a third down, and we'll call it four to go for the first down. McDowell to throw, being blitzed from the corner, flares it out left side to Peer, makes the catch, and he's going to be tackled short of the first down. That may have been the outside linebacker, Eric Zaleski, that came up to make the stop. As Peer looked like he had a shot at the first down, it'll be closed for a two-yard gain. It may have been Blair Hicks, not Zaleski, the defensive end that got out in the passing lane to make the stop. Either way, Bucknell down 14 to nothing is going to go for it on fourth down and two from the 43-yard line, and Colgate's going to call a timeout, and we'll take it with them. 14-0 Red Raiders. You're listening to Bucknell Football on the Bison Sports Network. Once again, by Mr. Bison. Вы также признаете влияние мысли на тело, когда взвесите последствия эмоций. Раздражение вызывает покраснение щек, а заботы, появление морщин на лбу, также определено, как радость озаряет лицо. Ненависть и злоба накладывают свою печать на того, кто поддерживает в своих мыслях эти факты. что наши мысли управляют нами, и что Шекспир словами Гамлета произнес очевидную истину, когда сказал, ничто само по себе не You hate to say play of the game, but this might be very early. Fourth and two from the 41. Bucknell trails 14 to nothing, and they're going for it. Fourth down and two. Triple tight ends. The wing back in motion. Myers in front of Pier. They're going to play fake to Pier on fourth down and go long. They've got Hurley out there, and it's between his hands. Incomplete, and the ball will turn over to Colgate. The Bison went for the bundle. And Hurley was out there, but McDowell just overthrew him at about the 15-yard line. Hurley had a step incomplete, and the Red Raiders stop Bucknell on their second fourth down try of the game. Well, you got a pretty gutsy call there, Bob. You got to like that going for it all. Um, 
had little success down by the goal line trying to run the ball outside, so they tried to fool Colgate, go up in the air on it, and uh, almost pulled it off. Now the defense is going to be asked to hunker down and come up with a stop here. Red Raiders with excellent field position. First down and 10 at their 41. Bennett will hand the ball to Weiss, and Weiss is not getting touched until he gets a couple of yards downfield. And Todd, this Ed Weiss, as he gets three yards, was a guy listed in their media guide with a line will add depth. Where did they find him? <laughs> he certainly added uh, more than that. He, he reminds me a little bit of Richie Lemon uh, in size and, and the way he, you know, he real quick and darts up through that line and uh, he's been a real outstanding find for them this year. He actually got a start when uh, Brian Owens was benched for uh, by the coach for some uh, breaking a team rule and has been in the lineup ever since. Second down and six after a four yard game. Backs in an offset eye. Bennett will give a quick handoff to the fullback Smith and Smith will charge across midfield to the 49. He'll be about a half yard short of the first down. Another five yards picked up by Smith and a little misdirection trap into the line of scrimmage is Cotton Bucknell's defensive line a little bit off guard here today. I'll tell you, Bob, I think that might be the most valuable player on that Colgate team, Damon Smith. You know, Ed Weiss has had a thousand yards rushing this year, but many of those have come after Damon Smith has opened up some huge holes for him to run behind. And uh, Damon Smith, when they get down close to the goal line, he'll put the ball in the end zone for the Red Raiders. This season, he has rushed for 857 yards. Last week was held to 13 by Navy on just six carries. And they'll measure for the first down here. And we'll see if it'll be third and a foot or a first down. And they are going to say first down. They gave a pretty good spot inside the 49-yard line. So the Red Raiders right now, with everything going their way, Bucknell again had not been behind since the fourth quarter of week number five. And they're behind 14 to nothing here with 10.20 to go. And it's interesting that the team on the school's second longest winning streak ever, 12 games, the longest streak, 17, was snapped by Colgate in 1952. First and 10, Venna on a straight drop, looking downfield, throws it left side, and it should have been intercepted. Ball was out in the flat intended for Quackenbush. It was in and out of the hands of Tom Farrell. And that was a terrible pass by Ryan Vanna, something that we've been told that he is prone to do, Todd. Tom Farrell had a lot of green in front of him if he could pull that ball in. He had the whole sideline right up the sideline there. And you're, you're right, Vanna seems to, to force the ball at times. And uh, I think that's what he did in that Princeton contest. Um, to me, it was a really strange game plan for them in that game where they passed the ball 31 times. They're such a, a, a real solid running team. Why you put the ball up that many times, I have no idea. Second and 10, Colgate from the... Bucknell 49-yard line, Bison in a four-man line. He'll hand the ball to the deep back, that's Weiss. He's going to try to go around the left end, shakes one tackle, shakes another, and he's going to get tackled by the third Bison. And it's at about the 40-yard line. It was Willie Hill that came up with the tackle at about the 40. And it'll be a pickup of about eight or nine on the play. That might have been a touchdown-saving tackle by Hill right there. It's going to be tough to make arm tackles on a day like this where the jerseys and the players are going to be covered in mud. You're going to slide right off. you got to make sure you really wrap those players up, take their legs out. Kind of reminds me of going to the old county fair with the greased pig competition <laughs> with the ball carrier slipping through. And tackles high. I don't think they're going to be very effective today. Third down and a yard to go for Colgate. 9.20 to go in the half, 14-0. Red Raiders, they hand the ball to the fullback. Smith shakes off the initial tackler and gets the first down. Falls forward as one of the tacklers had him by the ankle. That may have been Josh Lebrecht that had him by the ankle. Bucknell's white jerseys are getting covered in mud. Mark Imbertson was also there for the Bison. And wait a second, they're going to say the knee was down and spot him short, so it'll be fourth down and a foot to go for the first down. Another big play early in the game. Todd, how much more interest has it been in the Patriot League as we've got this fourth down coming up with the bid on the line this season? It seems like a lot more, Bob. I mean, we've been getting pretty good following in the media this year. And it always helps, too, that when you have two teams that are as solid as these two teams have been this year. Fourth down and a foot for Colgate. One wide out, two tight ends. Bennett of the deep back, that's Smith this time. He'll get the first down and more inside the 40 to the 35. We'll call it a gain of four. And the Red Raiders pick it up on fourth down. And again, Smith, 5'8", 220 pounds, is a load of bricks in the backfield. He was second team PL last year as a junior. And right now, he, Pierre, and Weiss may be scrapping for spots on the all-league team, first team this year. Right, and, and he's a fire plug back there. And, you know, if he gets a, 
I think he entered the game needing about 150 yards to get 1,000, and if he can do that, Weiss already surpassed the mark. Colgate become the first team ever to have two backs in one year in the league to do that. First and 10, Red Raiders, Fennel on the option, keeps it right side, now tosses to Weiss, 35, 30, hurdles a man, and a flag is down from far away on the far side. Then I think maybe another flag went on the near sideline. We'll have to wait for the call here coming up. It'll be a gain of about five, six yards if the play stands, but it's probably going to come back. From where it's dropped, you'd think it was an illegal block against Colgate. You can remember, Todd, uh, you've been around since the league's been going. If the uh, league has ever had more quality backs than we've seen this season? I was just going to comment on that, Bob. And this year we've had, uh, I think, 35 players uh, or, or, dif or different, different times during the season where the running back has gone over 100 yards, and that's by far more than, than any other year. We've got four 1,000-yard rushes right now, and that's the most we've ever had in a single season. Prior to that, we've only had three. And today, we still have a chance for a couple more kids to reach that plateau. So we could have 6,000-yard rushes. That's a pretty lofty number. Penalty illegal block against Colgate. It'll move the ball from where the spot of the foul was at about the 28-yard line out to about the 38. So it'll be first down over again, and we'll call it 13 to go, down to 8.06 to go in the first half. 14 to nothing Colgate. Bucknell had a first and goal at the four but couldn't get in. A muffed hold on a field goal try. Turned the ball over on downs. Bucknell also went for another fourth down on the previous drive. Colgate has cashed in twice. First and 13. Benna rolls left. Looks downfield. Stops. Throws it over the middle. Gregory out there. Has it at the five and scores. And it's 20 to nothing in favor of the Red Raiders with 7.58 remaining in the first quarter as Colgate scores on a 38-yard pass from Venna to Gregory, and the Red Raiders right now looking to be in high gear. I know it's early in the game, Bob, but that could be a real backbreaker right there. Bucknell into a pretty large hole now, down 20 nothing, extra point pending here. 21 nothing against this Colgate team is going to be hard to come back from. Well, Tom Gadd mentioned in the pregame show, and maybe he's a prophet, he said championship games, like Super Bowls, the team that gets the first break usually goes on to steamroll, and thus far, unfortunately, he's been correct. Federico's extra point is up, and it's wide, so it'll remain at 20 to nothing. We've got a break in the action. With the Red Raiders up three touchdowns, 20 to nothing, you're listening to Bucknell Football on the Bison Sports Network. Миссис Эдди также основала Fashion Science в Уэстон-Сверчушин, отдел, ведущий устройством лекций по христианской науке, члены которого читают лекции по христианской науке во всех частях мира. Несмотря на то, что имеется практичную христианскую науку, которая всегда готова помочь тому, кто ищет духовную науку, Нельзя упускать из виду, что целительной силой является сама истина, и что всякий может обратиться прямо к Богу истине с уверенностью, что Бог всегда помогает тем, It's been all Red Raiders as they're trying to deflate the balloon of the Bison and spoil the perfect season. Colgate leads it 21 it's going to be 20 to nothing after the missed extra point with 7.58 remaining in the half. We're visiting with Todd Newcomb of the Patriot League, talking about the play in the league this season. Kuchki will kick off. It's an end-over-end -end kick. Perkins will try it this time from the 14. Get to the 20, up the left hash to the 30, and he's going to slip, lose the ball, but fall back on top of it. Now may have lost the ball. The Red Raiders say they have it. And if Colgate comes up with it, this may be the knockout blow, and they do. O.J. Perkins just plain slipped and dropped the football, and everything going wrong for the Bison here this afternoon in the first half after they got to the four-yard line. Bob, you never want to second-guess a, a call or an official, but I don't know. It looked like he was down to me. He slipped and fell, and the ball looked like the ground caused a fumble there. But again, Colgate gets a break, and if they capitalize on this, uh, it's going to be a long afternoon. So Colgate will get the ball at the 28-yard line. From what you've seen, Todd, in some of the non-conference games, how do you think a Bucknell or Colgate stacks up with a Villanova or Delaware? Lehigh had a pretty good game with the Blue Hens last week. Right. I think, actually, 
of the two teams here, Colgate would have a better chance be just because they faced tougher competition throughout the season um, with, a, with a little stronger schedule than Bucknell has. First and 10, Colgate at the Bucknell 28. The first turnover goes to the Red Raiders. Venna going long. Hill wide open. Has it. He's got the score. And it's now 26 to nothing in favor of the Red Raiders. And it appears that the route is on here this afternoon. A one-play drive for 28 yards, and it comes with 7.43 remaining in the half. And Colgate, right now, takes advantage. They go for the jugular right away. Corey Hill, second touchdown pass of the game. Ryan Venna doesn't look pretty out there, but he gets the job done. Ever since he's assumed the starting role last season, he's done a great job for this Colgate squad. Gets the ball in the end zone when he has to. Adam Federico on for the extra point. And this time the kick is up and the kick is good. So the Red Raiders lead it 27 to nothing. Ryan Vanna kind of reminds me of Billy Kilmer. Just gets it done, throws a lot of wounded ducks, but they've gone right for the Red Raiders. He now has completed six of 11 for 128 yards and three touchdowns. Let's take time out, 27 nothing Colgate. You're listening to Bucknell Football on the Bison Sports Network. A one-play drive after the Perkins fumble on the kickoff. And it's 27 to nothing. Colgate Venna going to Hill for the second time today. And Kuchki will kick off. And Todd, this Colgate team, we were told they were explosive in the last few drives. We've seen their explosiveness. They've been totally dominant in the league this year, Bob. Beating their opponents by, you know, 30-something points a game. It's just been uh, uh, unbelievable to watch the, the way the team explodes. Perkin takes the kickoff at the 15, gets it out across the 35 to the 38. A flag is down. Colgate is off sides. And I would think Bucknell wanted to decline the penalty because they do have good field position at the 39-yard line of their own where they'll start things off and right now Todd the Bison down four touchdowns you'd have to think that uh, just trying to get something and sustain something right now is the most important thing for Bucknell to get their confidence back get a couple first downs go and move the chains get the ball down the field a little bit and start winning the battle of field position if nothing else and then uh, maybe they can break a play here and get in the end zone how difficult was it for the league to secure the bid to the playoffs? Uh, it, w it was quite a uh, quite a, uh, an effort for Connie Holbert, Herba to to do the um, lobbying with the people that she needed to to get the the automatic bid. But she did a lot of work on it. She's been working on it for a long time, and finally it came through. First and ten, Bucknell. They'll spot it at the 38. Bombic in front of Pierre. McDowell, the quarterback. Twin set to the right side. Colgate in a four-man front. McDowell will hand the ball to Pierre. Pierre over the right side across the 40. To the 42, Gomez on the tackle for Colgate. Short game, second down coming up. Bob Will a good showing by Colgate if, if they go or if Bucknell is able to pull this one out help for rankings and seedings in the future? I would hope. I, I was just going to say there are still some people on the football committee and around the country that think it's totally unfair that the Patriot League has an automatic bid, but they don't realize what that means to these schools and these institutions to be able to go to the playoffs in the postseason for these kids. Second down and about seven after a three-yard pickup. On a quick count, McDowell right side on the option, gives it to Pierre. 40, 45, hurls a man, get out to about the 50-yard line, and it'll be a first down, a pickup of nine yards on the pitch to Chris Pierre, so the Bison get a first down and get to midfield. The other thing, too, as we look at Pierre now up to 77 yards on nine carries, 
I'm not so sure that if you're William and Mary and you're sitting at six and four right now, and you got three or four teams ahead of you, that you might be better than these two teams. You've not had a good season, right? You want the teams that have played well to be rewarded for that, and certainly these two clubs have had just as uh, good a season as a, as a team like a William and Mary has. First and ten, Bucknell at the midfield stripe, trailing 27 to nothing. They'll hand the ball to Peer, and Peer will get a yard, maybe two, before he stood up by Matt Domiancic, the senior linebacker who came in with 129 tackles and you know, we talked about the running backs as we look at Bucknell's linebackers and Matt Domiancic of Colgate some outstanding linebackers in this league as well. Domiancic had a great game last week at Navy he had uh, I think 24 tackles against the midshipmen uh, and, and that's a, a large number of tackles although their defense was on the field a, a large amount of the time you play in Division 1A program that's going to happen. Kissing to the left rocket to the right Backs in an offset eye on second and eight. The fullback Bombic in motion to the right side. McDowell back to throw. Throws it out in the flat to Pier. Makes the catch in the backfield and will lose yardage. Coming up will be the safety, Jesse Boyd, to make the tackle. And he'll lose about four on the play as he gets tripped up at the 48-yard line. And the Bison now face a third down and about nine to go for a first down. With the requirement of having six wins against 1A teams, Todd, for Bowles, does the league find it more difficult to schedule 1A teams? Well... I think yeah, Army Navy definitely looked at that and, and cut down on their scheduling. Yeah, so uh, I'm not so, so sure it's going to help us either, though, to schedule those teams in the future. Third and 11, out of the shotgun is McDowell. Colgate with a five-man front. Nice pass from center. Picked up. McDowell now scrambles out of the pocket and runs right into the sack. On the sack for Colgate will be Trip Lane. That'll be his third sack of the season, and the Bison are going to have to punt the football away with... Brian Kramer coming on to kick. He tried to scramble out of uh, position, out of the pocket, and went right to Colgate. And Todd, right now, the Red Raiders playing with a lot of confidence. They can feel it. They know they're only uh, a little more than a half away from possibly going to the, the 1AA playoffs, and it's something that no other Patriot team, League team has ever done. And again, they have experience going back-to-back -back years in 82 and 83. Fourth down and 16 for the Bison. They need to get to the 40 if they're trying a fake here. Boyd back in single safety. And Kramer will punt it. High spiral. A nice kick by Kramer. Chasing Boyd back to the 11. Come up the middle of the field. Gets by Colby Cooper. Gets by the second one. Jeremy Myers slows him up. And he gets finished off from behind by Colby Cooper, who missed him initially. 46 yards. Good punt by Brian Kramer. Todd, want to thank you for spending some time with us today. Uh, talking a little bit about the Patriot League, and I think that it's been one of the better seasons for the year, for the season uh, 1997. It's been enjoyable. It really has, and whichever team wins here today, I'm sure they'll represent the league well next week. And really the disappointing thing, at least right now, Todd, it's not the kind of game that's going to come down to the wire like last year's championship game. Unless Bucknell can pull off some kind of miracle here. Well, Todd, we are disappointed. We saw Colgate with three touchdowns with you in the uh, It must have been my bad luck. Well, go down and give us some good luck. Thanks, okay, Todd. As Colgate care. tosses the ball to the right side, and Weiss will be strung out for no gain. That was Todd Newcomb, assistant executive director of the Patriot League, talking about the Patriot League's chances. And right now, it looks to be all Colgate with 414 remaining in the first half, 27 to nothing in favor of the Red Raiders. The Bison got the opening kickoff, marched it down for a first and goal at the four, ran three plays, got three yards, then tried a field goal, and had a bad hold. And ever since, it's been all Red Raiders. Then of this afternoon, 6 of 11 with three touchdown passes. And they've been able to control the ball on the ground, 51 yards for Weiss and 30 yards for Smith. On second down, Weiss will be stopped in the backfield for a yard or two loss. Weiss in the last two plays have been able to close the run down. The jerseys continue to get muddy. That may have been Josh Lebrecht on the tackle for the Bucknell Bison. Or maybe Tom Farrell, I can see a five, and that's about it. 3.20 to go in the half. Bucknell down four touchdowns. In the clean uniform, that's Duke Vich going to the left side. Hill and Gregory to the right. Then out of the shotgun, they'll play without a tight end. Bucknell blitzes in the middle. Then and now forced out of the pocket. Scrambling. Chased, and he's going to be sacked. No, he gets the ball away, and there's a diving catch downfield by Corey Hill. It'll be worth five yards, but it would have been a loss of 15 back at the seven. Benna showed the strength to be able to withstand the sack and throw the ball. In the pros, it might have been an in the grasp, so that's going to be about a 15-yard change of possession and give Colgate room to punt. But Bucknell going to get the football back, and when you look at the Bison having blocked nine punts in the Tom Gatt era, 
They have 10 men at the line, and this would be a time to send the fleet with two and a half minutes to go before the intermission. Kuchki on to punt. He's had a punt block this year by Army. Damon Smith, the up back, calling out the signals. Nice pass from center. The rush is picked up, and Kuchki's kick is going to bounce at the 40. Kissinger will pick it up at the 37 and then get hit and tackled immediately. On the stop for the Colgate Red Raiders was Brian Owens, a reserve running back, on the punt, 37 yards. And we'll call it no return for Kissinger. And the Bison now will send their two-minute offense out onto the field in hopes of trying to get something going before the intermission. The Red Raiders have had a 14-play, 75-yard drive. They've had an 8-play, 63-yard drive, a 7-play, 60-yard drive, all for touchdowns, and then a 1-play, 28-yard drive after the fumbled kickoff. So they've had three long drives and one quick strike. First and 10, Bucknell out of the shotgun, throws the slant into Rocket, makes the catch at the 40, to the 45, gets to midfield, to 50, to the near sideline, to the 40, and he's going to get a run out of bounds at the 35-yard line. It'll be a gain of about 26 yards on the pass play, and the sticks will move. Rocket caught it inside, then got lost in traffic as he broke it to the outside, so a nice little zigzag move by Ronnie Rocket, who went over the 1,000 yards in receiving last year, had a last week for the uh, career. This season he came in with 32 catches for 455 yards. Last season caught seven passes for a career high against Colgate for 98 yards, a lot on that big drive to tie the game. First and 10, bats snap out of the shotgun. McDowell pick it up and then gets sacked back at the 38 yard line. It'll be a loss of three, one of the few times all season that the ball has dribbled back to McDowell. Minute 55 and counting to go in the half. Second down and 13 after the loss of three. Bucknell in the two-minute offense will go without a huddle. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. Back split, McDowell under center. Bobbles the snap from center and has to cover it at the 40. It'll be another loss. Two bad snaps by the Bison, and now they'll be looking at third down and 14. One on the short snap and one on the deep snap. Minute 27 to go. Bucknell has all of their timeouts remaining and they're going to use one. We'll keep it here as we have already utilized all of our first half game action breaks. want to remind you, you're listening to the Bison Sports Network, WMLP, Milton Lewisburg, and WWPA in Williamsport tonight at 510 on WVLY 100.9 FM and WWPA in Williamsport. It'll be Bucknell basketball. The Bison will take on Brown in the consolation game at the Fairfield AT&T shootout. Chris Carl and Pat Farabaugh will have that game for you. Bison last night were 69-55 losers to Hofstra in a game in which the Bison fell behind 9-0 to start the game and never could get back into it. And the Bison here down 27-0 with the clock stopped with a minute and 27 remaining. Don McDowell, 4 out of 9 in the first half for 36 yards. Chris Peer averaging 7 yards a carry, 79 carries to be 79 yards in 10 carries. Of course, he had the big 40-plus yard run in the first drive for Bucknell. They got the Bison down to the four. And then the Bison got stonewalled at the goal line, had to try a field goal, and Don McDowell bobbled the hold. And ever since, Colgate has had momentum. Minute 27 remaining in the half. Bucknell looking for just a score here to close out the half. Third down now and 14 to go. McDowell under center, three receivers back split. Throws it on the slant into Kissinger, and the ball knocked down by the defensive back, Brandon Tinson. Bison fans wanted pass interference. It'll be fourth down, and the punting unit will come out with a minute 23 to go before halftime. And punting for the Bison is going to be Chris Peer, and it's usually his duty when the ball gets inside the midfield stripe. And Colgate is going to have a chance to show us what their two-minute offense is worth. Snapping will be Cal Wilcox. Fourth and 14. See if Bucknell indeed will kick the football. Colgate's left their regular defense on the field just in case. And Pierce slips, gets a low punt, but going to get a nice roll. It's going to roll inside the 10 and go to the six-yard line. So it'll be a punt of 34 yards. No return. About half of it on the roll. And Colgate will have a minute 14 to go. They have two timeouts remaining. We'll check and see if they want to 
basically run out the half. Bucknell's got a couple of timeouts, so they could force them to snap the ball a couple of more times. So we look at scores of other games. Fordham and Holy Cross are scoreless, middle of the second. Lafayette leading Lehigh 14 to nothing. That is also in the middle of the second. And number one, Michigan rolling it up on Ohio State, 13 to nothing with two minutes to go in the half. We'll take a look at some other scores at halftime. Colgate with the ball on their own six-yard line, and they're going to run the ball very safely in the middle of the field out to about the eight or nine, and they're going to let the clock run with a minute five to go. We'll see if Bucknell wants them to have to snap the ball, as if yet Bucknell has taken any timeouts, and it appears that the Bison are going to be content to let this half run out as well. The half has been played just in cold weather. No precipitation has fallen in the first half. And the Red Raiders have seen this half go totally their way. They lead it 27 to nothing. Second and six, the Red Raiders will break the huddle. Owens in the backfield now with Smith. And they'll hand off to Smith the tailback. And Smith will get across the 10 to the 11. And they don't have to run another play if they don't want to. Now Bucknell is going to spend a timeout. Terrence Parham gets to the referee, says we'll stop it with our second timeout forcing them to snap it on third down and four. And probably will call another quick timeout to force them to punt the football with 26 seconds remaining and hope that they could get a quick score on a block punt. Maybe with the muddy conditions, they could get a bad snap from center. Bucknell had two on their previous drive. Colgate bringing in some wide receivers here on third down and four as they think they'll have to make a first down now to keep things alive. Harvard, with its only loss of the season against Bucknell, is leading Yale 14 to nothing with five minutes to go in the first half and trying to close out an Ivy League championship, their first since the late 80s. A few flurries now beginning to come down here at Hamilton, New York. 26 seconds to go in the half, third and four for Colgate. Ball back on their 12-yard line. Venna under center. Venna is going to give it off on the little inside handoff to Smith, and Smith will be tackled at the line of scrimmage. Bison gang tackling, and they'll stop the clock with 20 seconds remaining. Bucknell is now out of timeouts, but they will indeed force Colgate to have to punt the football, and I'm sure Bucknell will go for the all-out rush with 20 seconds remaining in the period, down 27 to nothing. And a very good contingent up here from Lewisburg. Some of a disappointing crowd for Colgate, considering their fighting for the league championship as well. They said it hasn't seemed like the storybook season as they are six and four, but three of their losses is very difficult with Richmond out of the, what was the Yankee Conference, now the Atlantic 10. Richmond in the Sagarin polls, one of the better teams. And then of course, Army and Navy, teams you don't schedule with the idea of beating. Kuchki is gonna stand in his own end zone. And Bucknell will have 10 at the line where Sean Whitner blocked one last week against Towson. Kissinger standing inside the midfield stripe. 20 seconds remain in the half. Nice snap from center, big rush. Kuchki gets it away. Kissinger's going to let it bounce to the 39 and pick it up at the 43. Comes inside the 40, gets to the 36-yard line where he'll be tackled there. And Bucknell will have nine seconds. Chance maybe to throw a Hail Mary up to maybe get some points on the board before the half. On the tackle for Colgate was Brian Owens, 36 yards on the punt for Kuchki of Colgate. It has not been a memorable first half for the Bison, down 27 zip, three touchdown passes for Venna. He has only completed seven passes, so almost 50% of his throws have gone for touchdowns. He's thrown two long ones, 28 and 38, and another one for 10. Three receivers go to the right side as McDowell's gonna line up in the shotgun, nine seconds. Time for at least one play. Nice pass from center. Receivers go down the right side. McDowell throws it long down to the goal line. The ball is up. It's tipped, bouncing around, and nobody will come up with it. Kissinger had a chance to get it, and there's one second left. The clock stops, and on the incompletion, Bucknell's going to have a chance to reload and have a chance to maybe do it one more time. So it'll be second down. The down is moved, and again, if there is a defensive penalty, some sort of pass interference or holding, Roughing the passer or offsides, Bucknell would get another chance. Bison this time are going to try the left side. Well, now they're going to try the right side. 
It's going to be Kissinger, Perkins, and Rocket, the trio to the right side. Play clock down to five. Out of the shotgun, McDowell gets a pass from center. Two-man rush for Colgate. It's going to be a jump ball. McDowell throws it right corner of the end zone. He's reached the goal line. It's up. It's tipped into the air and caught, and a flag is down. We'll wait for the call. The ball was caught by Kissinger. It would be a 36-yard pass for the Bison. We'll wait and see who's going to be called for pushing. It's either going to be waved off on an offensive penalty or it's going to be declined and called a 36-yard touchdown pass to Artie Kissinger. The Bison say they've got the touchdown, and the penalty is against Colgate, and the Hail Mary is answered. A 36-yard touchdown pass tipped around in the air from McDowell to Kissinger. Kissinger's third touchdown catch of the season for McDowell. His ninth touchdown pass, and the Bison are on the board with no time left in the half, and they're going to go for the one-pointer as Colgate <laughs> sees the Bison break the goose egg here in the late seconds of the first half. McDowell to hold. Remember, Colgate missed an extra point on one of their touchdowns, and Coleman adds the extra point, and the Bison score with no time left in the half to make this game 27 to seven in favor of the Red Raiders. We've got a break as we head to the half. 